Hello everyone, my name is Sumit Kumar Sinha, PhD from University of California, Davis. The title of my presentation is Centrifuge Study of Down Drag on Axial Loaded Piles in Liquefiable Soils. Let me briefly introduce you about liquefaction induced down drag phenomena. Consider a pile with a strip resting in a dense non liquefiable sand layer passing through a loose liquefiable sand layer. Under starting conditions, when a head load is applied on the pile, the pile resists that load by developing positive skin friction on the shaft across the length of the pile and then positive strip resistance. When an earthquake comes, the loose sand layer liquefies and settles down, resulting in the development of negative skin friction at some length of the pile and then positive skin friction further below it. The depth at which the negative skin friction changes to positive skin friction is known as the neutral plane. And at this depth, the relative movement of the soil with respect to the pile is zero. Now, because of the negative skin friction development, the actual load on the pile increases with depth, becomes maximum at the neutral plane, and then decreases further down because of the positive skin friction. And because of that, as we can see, the overall load on the pile increases, the section of the pile providing positive skin friction decreases, and then there is a settlement in the pile. In the current state of the practice, a force-based approach is used for designing the piles for this phenomena, where the drag load is considered as an external load instead of an internal load resulting from this settlement mechanism which I described, and the pile settlement is neglected. And often these two assumptions have led to very expensive pile designs, especially for soil deposits where there are deep liquefiable layers in the, uh, in, the soil, layer, in the soil. Often these two simplifying assumptions are the result of the incomplete understanding of the phenomena itself. So in today's presentation, I will talk about uh, centrifuge tests and the results on the mechanisms that we absorb from the test and conclusions that we draw which can help in improvement of the current design procedure. So we conducted a series of centrifuge tests with different soil profiles and different pile tip embedments. On the left is SKS02 centrifuge test which had two piles with same head load but were embedded with different uh, tip embedments in dense sand layer. On the right hand side is SKS03 centrifuge test uh, with interbedded soil deposits with piles, um, three piles having the same embedment but loaded with different head loads. All the piles were 635 millimeter outer diameter piles with an interface angle of 30 degrees. And the embedment varied from 0D to 5D and the load on the pile resulted in a static factor of safety ranging from 1.5 to 12. All these models were shaken with multiple small to medium to large Santa Cruz earthquake motions and the piles were instrumented with actual strain gauges to measure uh, actual load. Uh, we installed pore pressure transducers to measure pore pressures and we installed cameras and lasers to measure soil and pile settlement. Now throughout all these uh, uh, shaking events and all these models, we found similar mechanisms of liquefaction induced down drag. So in today's presentation, I'll be talking about these uh, mechanisms uh, through uh, the 5D pile, in reference to the 5D pile. And occasionally, I will also refer to the response of the 0D pile. And just to remind you here, uh, the naming convention of these piles have been uh, on the basis of their embedment. So 5D means the tip was embedded five times their diameter in dense sand and the 0D pile means the pile was barely embedded in the dense sand. Let me describe the mechanism of liquefaction induced drag load through the journey of a shaking event. In the figure on the right, I'm showing the excess pore pressure profile with depth and the actual load profile with depth. At the bottom, I'm showing the different stages during a shaking event. At static conditions, before an earthquake, the excess pore pressure profile at all depths is zero and the pile have an initial axial load distribution. Here specifically the 5D pile had an initial drag load developed from the past shaking event and we can see the negative skin friction was developed in the liquefiable layer as well as the clay layer. When shaking starts, excess pore pressure starts to develop and that decreases the uh, effective stress of the soil, decreases the negative skin friction and thus drag load resulting in the movement of the actual load profile towards the left. 
at the peak of the shaking the loose sand layer liquefies and as a result in the liquefied soil the negative skin friction becomes almost zero and that can be seen from the constant action load profile and correspondingly the tip uh, tip load also decreases also we see here that redistribution of excess pore pressures from the liquefied soil to this non liquefiable uh, layer results in very large excess pore pressure developments and this is really important because often we assume that the non liquefiable layer will result in very small excess pore pressures but this redistribution can increase very large excess pore pressures that can reduce the tip capacity of the pile and cause large settlements and we'll see that later in our presentation how did that affect the settlement of the pile when shaking stops excess pore pressure starts to dissipate and soil settles and that results in the development of again negative skin friction and drag load and this phenomena since it happens from bottom to top it results in the development of drag load also from bottom to top and consequently the tip load also increases and overall the actual load distribution starts moving towards the right as shaking continues because of the low permeability of the clay layer all the excess pore pressures below it equalizes and continues to equalize until all the excess pore pressures are dissipated after complete reconsolidation uh, the soil completely settles the drag load on the pile increases uh, even higher than the initial drag load it started with and correspondingly correspondingly the pile tip load also increases now if you look at the drag across multiple shaking events what we see is that the drag load which is shown here in magenta with and the arrow indicates the magnitude of drag load we see that the drag load increases uh, with multiple shaking events and reaches a saturation value approaching a limit load curve estimated assuming negative skin friction is equal to the interface shear strength which is shown also here in this figure also we can see from the results that full liquefaction is not a prerequisite to the development of drag loads significant negative skin frictions were observed in small to medium shaking events even though they did not resulted in the uh, um, liquefaction of the soil and that happened because it takes only a small amount of settlement to develop negative skin friction and that can happen without causing liquefaction in the soil now if you look at the pile settlement throughout a shaking event as a function of excess pore pressure ratio at the tip we see that majority of the settlement of the pile occurs during shaking when the excess pore pressures are high whereas post shaking uh, the settlement of the pile is very small now if you look at the pile settlement across multiple shaking events we see that as the excess pore pressure ratio at the tip increases the settlement of the pile increases and when the excess pore pressure ratio becomes even very high the piles can even plunge in soil now if we plot the soil settlement on the same plot we see that the settlement of the soil is generally uh, higher than the pile settlement and that gives an important uh, uh, that indicates that the relative settlement of the soil and the pile might be an important criteria to consider in a pile design instead of only the absolute settlement of the pile this brings to the end of my presentation with the following conclusions from the study down drag is not the controlling mechanism for pile settlement during an earthquake event the reduced pile capacity during shaking causes most of the settlement in the piles a displacement based procedure should be used for pile design with pile settlement as the performance criteria rather than a force based method the magnitude of the negative skin friction in the liquefiable soils should be taken equal to the interface shear strength the design procedure should also consider the effect of redistribution in increasing excess pore pressures in the bearing layer and the associated reduction of pile tip capacity and a separate serviceability criteria in terms of total pile settlement and differential settlement should be considered to ensure the post earthquake functionality of the structure with that i would like to thank can france for funding this research and the center for geotechnical modeling at uc davis for helping us running the centrifuge tests